Emmeline is so much. She's an adventurer and a writer living in Laramie. And I think her talk today is gonna tell you just what an adventurer can be. She's worked at National Geographic Magazine and High Country News. She tells stories about environmental issues and natural history. Currently, Emmeline works at, as the communications coordinator at the UW Haub School of Environment and Natural Resources. Emmeline's talk today is called Perilous Passages. Please welcome Emmeline Ostland. Some of the most incredible journeys that happen take place right at the edge of our backyards, and we may not even see them or realize that these journeys are happening. I'm talking about wildlife migration. And Wyoming is home to some of the most incredible wildlife migrations that exist. Specifically, I'm going to tell the story of a 150 mile long pronghorn antelope migration that covers western Wyoming. Around the world, migrations, wildlife migrations, are disappearing due to a number of threats that include climate change and habitat loss, development obstructing migration corridors and other threats that cause these to disappear. In Wyoming, we have so much open space and public land and a small population that we have some of the most significant intact wildlife migrations that exist in the lower, lower 58 states right here in Wyoming. But these migrations are not free from threat either. A couple of years ago, I got the idea that I wanted to follow this 150 mile long pronghorn antelope migration across western Wyoming on foot to try to see the threats and challenges that animals face when they're undertaking this migration. They go to Grand Teton National Park in the spring to raise their fawns on the safe, flat benchlands there, but they can't stay in the park over the winter because the snow piles up too deep for them to find forage or survive. So they take off in the fall with their fawns of the year into the Grovant Mountains to migrate south to winter ranges in the Green River Basin. And it's very unusual for pronghorn antelope to cross mountains. This is not a typical landscape for them to venture into. When I undertook this project, for me it meant spending a lot of nights alone in the mountains. It meant a lot of hiking. And I had this very small tent that I carried to sleep in. And I should mention this is grizzly country. I was looking for hoof prints, for trails. I had a general sense of where this migration took place, but I didn't know the exact route that it followed. So I was always looking for signs, often sitting on a hilltop just watching where pronghorn might go so that I could figure out where I needed to travel. The Red Hills is one of the first challenges they meet in their migration, and they have to walk single file on these very narrow trails above cliffs that hover over the Grovant River. I collaborated on this project with a wildlife photojournalist named Joe Reese who used motion sensor cameras to get these really close-up photos of the migration, and that helped me understand even better what the perspective of the animals in the migration is. After they cross the Red Hills, the migrating pronghorn antelope have several significant rivers they have to ford, and they're actually quite good swimmers. Their hair is hollow and acts like a life jacket, but who knew that these animals with their skinny little legs could actually swim raging rivers? Another challenge they face is housing developments further to the south. And these subdivisions continue to grow. Every year there's a couple more roads, a couple more houses, and in some cases they span the entire width of the migration corridor. With the subdivisions come fences and Pronghorn are not good jumpers like deer. They will occasionally jump a fence, but usually they crawl underneath. So if they come to the fence when the snow drifts are piled up, they can be trapped by the fence and starve to death behind it. In some places, fences are being retrofitted to be more wildlife friendly, so the bottom wire is higher above the ground, and that helps the animals be able to move through what was a barrier. Another challenge in the migration corridor is highways. This is a dangerous point on the highway a little bit west of Pinedale, Wyoming, that these antelope from Teton Park have to cross over. There's quite a bit of traffic here, and there are often carcasses of pronghorn along the road. And once they reach their winter range in the Green River Basin, they face a lot of energy development. It's one of the most um, 
heavily developed natural gas fields in the United States. So there are all these different challenges and threats, some natural and some human caused, that the animals face along their journey. But these pronghorn are so resilient and so adaptable. And despite all the challenges they face so far, they are continuing to undertake this 150 mile long journey every spring and fall across the state. And humans have stepped up too to change some things to make it easier for the animals, like constructing the first ever wildlife overpass constructed for pronghorn antelope. And this is that same spot on the highway west of Pinedale. I followed the journey of these animals on foot and by seeing the landscape through their eyes, I was able to think differently about how we humans can live on the land as well. Thanks to you and to Joe Reese for his photographs. Thank you, Emmeline, for that astonishing story.